My name is Elena Blaine Schultes, and I'm a master's student at Mississippi State University under the advisement of Dr. Dan Reynolds, and I'll be presenting on, on the effect of dicamba concentration and application timing on soybean growth and yield. With the herbicide resistant traits in cropping systems, we see increased weed control options as well as overall improved weed control, additional modes of action in the field, and also more flexibility in application timing. Some more recent advancements in soybean and cotton seed traits are the dicamba resistant seed traits and the 2,4-D resistant seed traits. With these auxin resistant cropping systems, we're going to begin to see more large broadcast applications of auxin. And with these applications, we believe that auxin injury is likely to occur due to tank contamination or drift to off-target crops. Prior research at Mississippi State has been conducted in cotton that has indicated that a yield loss can occur with 2,4-D or dicamba. Previous research indicated that soybeans exposed to auxin herbicides can develop vegetative malformations and produce lower yielding crop. However, the extent of that damage is dependent upon the rate and timing of the application that is being made. Also, previous research has indicated that applications dicamba made at the V1 to V3 growth stages cause less seed yield loss than dicamba applied at V7 to early bloom application timings. Our research objectives were to determine the effect of dicamba concentration on soybean growth and yield, and also to determine the effect of dicamba application timing on soybean growth and yield using a single low use application rate. Now we're going to focus on the first objective right now. We had a randomized complete block design with a factorial arrangement of treatments, with factor A being the application timing and factor B being the herbicide rate. This study was conducted over six site years, two being in Starkville, Mississippi, two being in Brooksville, Mississippi, one being in Stoneville, Mississippi, and then also one in rural Arkansas. For the factors, we had factor A, which were the two application timings, where we had a vegetative application made at the V3 growth stage, as well as a reproductive application made at the R1 growth stage. Factor B were the seven application rates. We used the diglycoamine salt of dicamba, which is the Clarity 4, 4L formulation. What we did is we took a 1x rate and we fractioned that down all the way to a 11024x rate. Uh, with that lowest rate, the 11024th x rate, the data that we'll be showing for it was only the mean from four locations because it was not evaluated in 2012. And we also included an untreated check for comparisons. All of our applications were tractor applied using a two-row shielded boom with the 15 gallons per acre delivery volume. In 2012, we used T-Jet XR 8002 spray tips. And in 2013, we used T-Jet TTI 11002 spray tips. The data that we collected were visual evaluations at 7, 14, 21, and 28 days after the treatments were made. Plant heights were collected after each application timing. We also collected node counts just before harvest, and then we also collected yield, and also determined yield reductions. The data that I'm going to show you today was analyzed in SAS 9.3 under PROC Glimix with a significant level of 0 0.05. This is some of the symptomology that we saw in the field. As you can see in the upper left hand corner, you can see the cupping of the leaves. And in the middle, the twisting of uh, stems and petioles, that epinastic response. We also saw some calluses that formed on the stems and petioles. This slide uh, represents the treatments that received uh, zero X application rate of dicamba. So this is the untreated checks. But I'm going to use this slide just to set up the pictures that I'm going to show you in just a second. All the pictures on the left-hand side are from the V3 application, and all the pictures on the right-hand side are from the R1 application. Each plot was four rows, and we treated only two center rows. All these pictures that I'm going to show you today were taken 21 days after the applications were made. This is dicamba applied at a 1x rate. Dicamba applied at a quarter X rate. Dicamba applied at a sixteenth X rate. Dicamba applied at a one sixty fourth X rate. Dicamba applied at a one two fifty six X rate. And then Dicamba applied at our lowest application rate of a one ten a one ten twenty fourth X rate. 
This graph represents soybean visual injury 14 days after the applications were made. This is averaged over all the years and locations. On the y-axis, we have percent visual injury, which is a scale from 0 to 100. And the x-axis, we have the fractional rate that was applied. And keep in mind, the 1x rate was equivalent to 16 fluid ounces per acre. The blue bars represent the treatments that received the application in the V3 growth stage. And then the green bars represent the treatments that received the application in the R1 growth stage. As you can see with the 1x ray, we had greater than 90% than visual injury for both application timings. And then with the lowest um, application rate, we still saw greater than 20% than visual injury. This graph represents the soybean visual injury 28 days after the applications were made. Again, this is averaged over all years and locations. With the 1x rate, we had greater than 92% visual injury for either the V3 or the R1 growth stage. And then with the lowest application rate, the 11024th x rate, we had greater than 25% visual injury at both application timings. Overall, this graph has a, shows a little bit more visual injury than we saw at 14 days. This graph represents the soybean height reductions by application rates. This is averaged over all the application timings, years, and locations. Uh, the graph is set up the same way, uh, except for on the y-axis we have percent reduction, and then the x-axis is the fractional rate that was applied. With the 1x rate, we had a 91% height reduction, and then with the 11024th x rate, we had a 10% height reduction. However, that was not signif significantly different from the untreated check. This graph represents the soybean height reductions by application timing. So this is averaged over all those rates that I just showed you as well as years and locations. The treatments that received the application in the R1 growth stage had a 41% height reduction and those that received in the vegetative growth stage had a 34% height reduction. Overall we had significant and consistent visual injury at 14 and 28 days after the treatments were made. Plant height reductions corresponded with that increased injury. And visual injury was at least 20% regardless of the rate that was applied or when that rate was applied. This graph represents the soybean yield reductions by application rates. This is averaged over all the timings, years, and locations. As you can see, with the 1x rate, we had a 99% yield reduction. And then with the lowest uh, application rate, the 11024th x rate, we had a 10% height reduction, which was significantly different from the untreated check. And with that, just keep in mind that the mean for that... Uh, particular rate was only from four mean locations, not six like the rest of them. This graph represents the soybean yield reductions by application timings. Once again, this is averaged over all the rates, years, and locations. The treatments that received the application in the R1 growth stage had a 46% yield reduction, and those that received it in the vegetative growth stage had a 41% yield reduction. We saw a greater yield, greater yield reductions that occurred from the higher rates of dicamba as well as the R1 application timing versus that V3 application timing. That distinctive rate response was observed. That was that stair step pattern that you saw there in those graphs. And even with the lowest rate, the 11024th x rate, we still saw significantly reduced yields of 10% yield reductions. Now we're going to move on to the second objective, which, just to remind you, is to determine the effect of dicamba application timing on soybean growth and yield using a single low-use application rate. We had a randomized complete block design that was conducted over six site years, two being in Starkville, Mississippi, two being in Brooksville, one being in Stoneville, Mississippi, and then one also in rural Arkansas. We had an application rate, which is equivalent to 0.25 fluid ounces per acre, which was the same as the 164th x rate in the experiment that I just showed you. We used the diglycolamine salt to dicamba, which again is the Clarity 4L formulation. What we did is we took that low application rate and we applied it at weekly intervals. So we began making application one week after plant emergence and continu continued that pattern all the way to 14 weeks after plant emergence. And then we also included an untreated check that received no herbicide treatments. All of our applications were made using a backpack sprayer. We used a two-row handheld of boom. Our delivery volume was 15 gallons per acre. We used CO2 as our propellant. And then we also used the T-Jet TTI 11002 spray. These pictures are going to be set up the same way as the uh, previous experiment. So we had four row plots, and we only treated the two center rows. I'm going to quick click through these rather quickly. So as I do that, just keep in mind 
that all these treatments receive the same application rate. The only difference is when that application was applied. So this is 0.25 fluid ounces of acre dicamba applied one week after plant emergence. That same rate applied two weeks after emergence, three weeks after emergence, four weeks after emergence, five weeks after emergence, six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks. And then after nine weeks, we saw no significant uh, injury, height reductions, or uh, yield reductions. So I'm not going to show you the rest of those pictures, just for time's sake. This graph represents soybean visual injury 14 days after the applications were made. Uh, they were aver this was averaged over all years and locations. And on the y-axis, we have percent visual injury. And on the x-axis, we have the application timing. Uh, the greatest amount of injury was observed, was observed at weeks 2, three and four, which was anywhere from about 37 to about 39 percent visual injury. And as you can see, after the eight-week application was made, we saw no significant visual injury at this time. This is soybean visual injury 28 days after the applications were made. Here we saw the greatest amount of injury at weeks three, four, five, and six, and they ranged anywhere from about 37 percent to 42 percent visual injury. And then once again, after the eight-week application was made, we saw no significant visual injury in the field. This graph represents soybean height reductions. This was averaged over all the years and locations. On the y-axis, we have percent reduction, and the x-axis, once again, is the application timing. Uh, the greatest height reductions were observed at weeks five and six, which ranged anywhere from about 42% height reduction to 47% height reduction. And then once again, just like the visual injury, the trend is the same. We saw no significant height reductions after the eight-week application was made. Visual injury was greater 28 days than 14 days. Also, the height reductions were greatest when dicamba was applied at weeks four, five, and six after the plant emergence. And these corresponded with the V6, R1, and R2 growth stages. No significant visual injury or height reductions were observed with applications made of the eight weeks of growth, which corresponded with the R4 growth stage. This graph represents soybean yield reductions by application timing. Once again, this is averaged over all those years and locations. We saw the greatest amount of, high, of yield reduction that occurred at weeks five and six, which ranged anywhere from a 44% height redu yield reduction to a 47% yield reduction. And then once again, after the nine-week application was made, we saw no significant yield reductions in the field. This slide shows you the scale that we use to determine the soybean growth stages in the field. Uh, I'd like to draw your attention to these in particular, the late vegetative, early reproductive growth stages. And that's important because this graph uh, represents the soybean yield reduction by growth stage at application. So as you can see with uh, we saw the greatest amount of yield reduction occurred at the V4, V6, R1, and R2 growth stage. And that ranged anywhere from about 40% to a 51% yield reduction. And then like we said before, after the plant was in the R5 growth stage, we saw no significant yield reduction in the field. Overall, we saw similar results in yield reductions as we did as height reductions, except for the yield reductions were slightly greater. The greatest yield loss occurred at weeks 3, 4, 5, and 6, which corresponded with the V4, V6, R1, and R2 growth stages. Something interesting that we saw in the field, but I will not be presenting today, are some of the pod deformations that were observed with those applications that were made at the late vegetative and early reproductive applications, as you can see in the picture in the uh, lower right-hand corner. Overall, with higher rates of dicamba, we, all, we saw the greatest amount of injury, height reductions, and yield reductions. With the reproductive application, especially the R2 growth stage, we saw greater injury, height reduction, and yield reductions. Uh, height reductions showed a similar trend to yield reductions throughout this whole experiment. Overall, these data indicate that soybeans are extremely sensitive to low concentrations of dicamba. Thus, sprayer hydrine and drift mitigation will be very important to consider. And also, soybean response to dicamba is dependent on the growth stage that it's in when the application is made. Looking ahead, where can we go from here? I believe that it's going to be important to look at a comparison of application timing on determinate versus indeterminate soybean varieties, and also do a static rate comparison of various new salts of dicamba. This is my literature review. 
At this time, I'd like to thank the Soybean Promotion Board for funding this research, and also like to thank my committee members as well as my fellow, fellow graduate students for all their help and efforts during this research. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. My email address is listed in the lower left-hand corner of the presentation. Thank you again.